Hey y'all, this is Kanku, and this video is my celebratory Q&A to commemorate getting to 10,000 subscribers. At least it was until I got 15,000. Then it was to celebrate that. At least it was until I got 20,000. God, this is nuts, you guys are nuts. Anyway, welcome to my 20,000 sub Q&A special. I can't stress enough how thankful I am to every single one of you for helping me get here. It's like something out of the goals I used to have set for myself when I was like 8 years old. Didn't even think it was possible still, but now here we are. Crazy! Anyway, sappy stuff over, I'm going to be answering questions I got on Patreon first and then moving on to some of the ones I got on YouTube. There will be little drawings along with it too, because everything's better with those. Anyway, on to the questions. Oh, one last thing. Sorry for the late upload. I forgot that Thanksgiving's a thing. I also had to work out the music situation. It just got really complicated. Pushed it back to Monday. Anyway, enjoy. Where did you get the goblin lore from in your latest video? Uh, that's all homebrew. Um, I took the, the 5e goblin stat blocks and played around with some of the uh, traits and stats and numbers until I got something befitting of what I wanted. If you could have any monster be an option to play as in D&D, what would it be? I think I would do um, like a basilisk. Um, it'd be like a dragonborn, but instead of a dragon, it's a basilisk because um, <laughs> That sounds fun. Which of your characters has been your favorite to play and why? I'd say uh, my dragonborn um, star paladin, mainly because she had heavy plate armor and uh, I got it to a point where I could like equip it and unequip it like Iron Man. So I could just become like super fast or super beefy or not super fast, but like not weighed down. It was a lot of fun. It was kind of disastrous for everybody who wasn't me, but it's a story for a different time. What is your favorite playable race and class in 5e and why? I'd have to say favorite playable race, uh, half orc, because they get that uh, they get a uh, relentless endurance, which is just really cool and is a, it's fun to role play. Be like, oh, I'm dead, psych, you know. <laughs> for class, I'd say cleric or wizard it's either cleric or wizard because they just they like they can always be made to look cool you know like oh your group gets in a big fight cleric stands in the center pops a defense circle and everybody fights from inside it that's just a sick vision and it's fun to create those like cinematic moments and i think wizards or cl i mean every class can do it but i just see more opportunities with clerics and wizards uh, 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 pineapple on pizza that's gonna be a hard no for me, man. Yep. <laughs> uh, are people who play bestial races closeted furries? Um, I think I think it's a tell if they are. I don't think it's like a straight equation. Like if you do, you are. I think it's like a they might be kind of deal. Uh, when writing lore for your homebrew world, would you think everything up yourself, or do you take inspiration from other games, worlds, and maybe myths and legends? I would like to say that I don't take, like, that much, uh, material from other sources, but I'm human. I process information and spit it out whether I mean to or not, so, I mean, I definitely do, um, use other sources, like, like you said, myths, games, etc. Um... Yeah, no, I, I think I, I think I do, but ultimately, when you don't notice that you're doing that, it comes more naturally and blends with your act original content to create a much more interesting world. Um, have you ever considered doing draw streams or process vids on how you go about animating, drawing your videos? Um, yeah, I think I think we're early enough into this channel where pretty much anything is on the table, and sooner or later down the line, you'll see something like that. So. Uh, Keep your eyes open. What first interested you in drawing and when did you start? Oh God, um, psh, my dad had has a big collection of like every Marvel comic under the sun from like the 90s and 80s. So I used to read those a lot. My mom draws, drew a bunch when I was a kid. So I pretty much just collected it. I watched a lot of animated movies, like 2D animated movies. Um, and it all rubbed off on me. So now I'm here, and uh, yeah. So I guess when I started, it wouldn't be off base to say like two years old. I mean, I wasn't good, but I was trying then, that's for sure. Wow, that's great. Let's give a hand for our Patreon questions. And now we got the ones from YouTube. 
Uh, do you have a favorite monster? Yes, yes I do. Uh, oh god, do I? Animated armor. Yeah. Oh yeah, I love the animated armor. Who's your favorite Critical Role character to draw? Now that is a trickier question, because I like to draw all of them, but uh, I'd say just by like how often I've drawn, I'd say not, or Ford. It's really not a Ford. I just, they just look good to me, and I can always, uh, I'm always happy with how they turn out. Uh, what was your first character in D&D that you can remember? Um, my first character wasn't actually in D&D. She was in Pathfinder. Uh, she was a, a, a bard, and this was, this was back when I was the thing that I've grown to detest. I was a bard with the singular goal of wanting to bone a dragon. I know, <laughs> kind of burns my skin to say it now, but I was that guy. <laughs> um, yeah, that was, the, that was the first character. Not my favorite, not my proudest moment, but she was, yep. Uh, have you ever got to talk to other D&D YouTubers yet? Like Dingo Doodles, Puffin Forest, Zibashu, and any others I might have forgotten. No, not yet, but uh, one of my favorite YouTubers is Z, and I would love, 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 love to collaborate with him sometime, but I'm early. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fledgling YouTuber. That's, that's later on down the line. Uh, where can we find more of your art? Instagram, Twitter, etc. Right now, the only place you can find it is on YouTube. My primary focus is on the, um, is on these, these videos. Uh, so that's, that's where I'm, where I'm uploading. Um, what is your favorite instance of a critical fail? This one is actually very solid. Um, in a game I was doing a while back and like, June, I want to say junior year, but it might have been sophomore year. Um, uh, one of my friends, he was playing a, uh, he was playing a, 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 a Kenku ninja, and needless to say, cool combination. But uh, in one of the final fights against this uh, like possessed demon lumberjack thing, uh, he climbed up onto the roof of of the cab, and they were fighting around and attempted to plunging attack him for the final kill. Of course, he crit failed, uh, fell on the ground, and ended up impaling himself. He did not die, but he was out of the fight. To properly rejuvenate your muscles is picking up a seagull by the legs and violently shaking it around a good option. I've heard mixed results on that one, um, so whatever works for you. Are you going to live stream any of your campaigns? Yes. I, I would like to, but right now my uh, current party is in a pretty tumultuous area as far as college goes. Like, every single one of them is in school. I am the only one that isn't. So, um, yeah, it's uh, we, we need to find more solid ground, and I've pitched the idea to them, and it kind of floats around in the air for a while, but most mainly the only reason we haven't really is just because... Not, it's uh, it's hard to plan. It's hard to plan. Everybody has their own things going on. Uh, bad answer, but <laughs> that's the best I can give. I'm sorry. Uh, how did you get into D&D? Uh, started through Pathfinder when uh, we picked that up sophomore year and then moved on to D&D after we learned uh, that there was a game out there that we don't have to be doing that much math for. So me and my friends sunk a hundred bucks into getting the uh, player handbook and the DM's guide and now I'm here. Uh, longest running session you've been part of 6 p.m. to 1 45 in the morning uh, We didn't even go to bed after that. We just stayed up for another two hours and watched Godzilla 2014. It was great uh, What do you think is the most important thing for a GM to consider while creating a campaign? I personally think that it's making the players impact on the world and story tangible as well as letting them explore their characters in fun and interesting ways I agree 100% actually if 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 yeah, no, like that would be my answer if you didn't say it already. Um, but I think I think second most important is making a world that breathes and and moves around the characters as well. Um, because if you have that, then they'll be more likely to get engaged if they see motion outside of their uh, their timeline, if you will. Um, gives them more areas to branch out with. So yeah, it, it's a it's a making tangible impact. Um, around the players, as well as creating a world that, for lack of a better term, goes on without them. Uh, how did you get into Critical Role? Oh god, it was the start of uh, Campaign 2, and I like the uh, live stream popped up in my recommended, so I just jumped right in. Uh, do you take commissions? Not yet, but I will maybe, you'll see. Uh, how are you so awesome? It's a, it's a strong diet of just, uh, just honeycomb and mint leaves. Trust me, it does does the body and mind wonders, and everybody else feels it. 
Are you mostly a DM or a player? I'm mostly a DM. Every time I play, I always just start building little worlds on the side and just, God, I have to DM. Uh, it's kind of, it's, a, it's an addiction, but you know what? It's a good addiction. It's a good addiction. <laughs> uh, what do you think about the new additions of D&D? I'd say I love, love the new additions. Uh, the new edition, really. Um, I think it's in a really good spot, and uh, it's it's kind of like the perfect, perfect um, incarnation of the game, uh, balancing between like narrative and numbers really well. Um, when you play D and D, were there any times when it started to become frustrating as a player or DM, and how did you get past uh, resolve it? Thanks for the vids. Uh, you're welcome for the vids. And as far as your question, I'd say. Uh, when it gets frustrating is when you make the session plan and you write out all the plot hooks and then one person cancels and then the whole party cancels. Just kidding. I love you guys. You're the best party I've ever played with. Seriously. <laughs> Planning is honestly the most frustrating part. Mainly because, yeah, you can control your world. You have say over what every NPC does. But your players are free agents. And if, if your timelines don't match up, then there's nothing you can really do about that. It's a bit of a meta answer. Um, what's the dumbest thing you've done in d and I'd say the dumbest thing I've done uh, was as a DM, uh, I told myself that I could ad-lib an entire um, arc of a story. Uh, I had pillars, like bullet points, um, but that was it. And the second the players didn't do exactly what I thought they'd do, which was like looking back, what they wouldn't do in any situation. The whole thing got derailed and uh, it be, it was a miserable time for me. Although I think I think the players had fun, maybe. Ugh, I don't know. <laughs> Are you three crows in close to make the form of a kanku? Ooh, well, uh, I don't think I'm obligated to answer that one. Uh, who's your favorite character in our campaign? You have to say Sunshine. Oh, oh. yeah, okay, Sunshine's pretty good, but uh, I have plot hooks for everybody because they're all the best character. Yay! But Sunshine's pretty good. I'm just gonna say that. What drawing software do you use? Uh, I use Clip Studio Paint. It's really good if you have 45 bucks, I think. That's how much it was. Do it if you're a fan of digital art. Um, and, and frequently do that, because it's worth it. Um, what monsters do you love to fight? Anything that you can climb on. So like an, uh, a, 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 a giant ogre. Ogres are cool. They're the big, big ones. Um, dragons are cool. Anything that you, as, as anything that players can can get on that have big environmental effects, like ones that can just plow through buildings, as dangerous as they are, I think those are the coolest because they they're moment makers. Uh, that's a term I'm gonna use a lot. They're moment makers. Uh, what do I do when I can't plan a tabletop session? Improve your world. Improve your characters. Improve your story. Uh, Polish everything, and once you're done with that, branch out to the areas around where your players are and build those. There's no better advice that I've ever gotten uh, about D&D than write the world, not the plot. If you write the world, then you have outs and ins and bridges for every single situation your players can run through. Um, I'm a fan of your animations. The latest one about the different types of goblins was super useful. Do you have a favorite encounter creature? I'd say anyone that's capable of shape-shifting uh, for not necessarily malevolent purposes, just to screw at the party. Um, I, I, I think those are the coolest for like on-the-road encounters or anywhere encounters, really. Because uh, they can they, they always make your party suspicious and uh, and open up a lot of fun story beats. That was fun. Thanks to everyone who sent in questions, even if yours didn't get into the video. I'm gonna go back through the community post and answer any I missed with a text answer, so keep a lookout for your uh, replies on your comments. Don't forget to check out my Patreon, it's pretty cool. I've put up the homebrew stat blocks from the Goblin Monsters Misguided episode there for the public. Uh, but if you pledge anything, you'll get that stuff a week before everyone else. Food for thought? Anyway, back to work for me. Hope you all enjoy the videos I put out in the future, and I'll see you then.